I think one of the things that strikes people when they come into the Bay Area is how close the wildlife is to where so many people are living. I love to just sit around and watch birds fly and soar. I love to watch fish thrashing up rivers uh, because it puts you in touch with the greater vibrancy and vitality of a world around you. There's a real need for people to understand their region, the hills that rise up above us, the bay upon over which we cross. If you drink water, if you breathe air, you are affected by the ecology of San Francisco Bay, the weather patterns around the bay, you're connected to the shoreline and to the goings on in the bay. You need a place to go to refresh and to recreate or recreate yourself. A new series is winging its way to Northern California. Bay Nature on the air. Since 2001, Bay Nature magazine has been exploring, understanding, and celebrating the natural world of the San Francisco Bay Area. Its pages are filled with fascinating stories about local creatures, natural history, and the wild places that surround us right here in our own backyard. My name is Malcolm Margolin. I'm publisher of a small press, Heyday Books, and I helped uh, found Bay Nature right from the very beginning, right from the time it was a little seed. A community can develop around an idea, and this was a community that uh, I saw as developing around the idea simply of the beauty of the Bay, of the Bay Area. After more than four years of publication, a great store of content is already in place for a groundbreaking television program, loosely based on the structure of the magazine itself. Ask the Naturalist segments will answer viewers' nagging questions about nature through interactive dialogue with some of the area's leading environmentalists. These are the northern elephant seal, which has uh, been coming back big time in the Point Reyes National Seashore. Bay Nature Magazine sometimes asks me to answer questions in the column called Ask the Naturalist. And I love the questions that I get, the curiosity of the people that live in the Bay Area. And they want to know more. I mean, not just, not just that that is a red-tailed hawk or a red-shouldered hawk or, you know, why banana slugs have slime. You know, what good is that stuff? Any predator, uh, whether it's a, a coyote or a golden eagle, uh, I know that if there is a predator, that means it ha they have to be eating prey. And if there's prey, there has to be adequate habitat for the prey. So the predators are sort of indicator species. And if I see a predator, that means all is right with the world. Any predator always warms my heart. On the trail tours the Bay Area's diverse and stunning open spaces, some well known, others hidden gems, meeting colorful and knowledgeable characters along the way. There's sort of a love story going on here at Edgewood. The love story has elements of incredible power and violence, how we got our rocks, tectonic forces and so on, and there's also heart-wrenching pathos. We have 11 rare endangered species here on the edge of existence. This is the California plantain, prime bay checker spot butterfly food. And you can see it's got these little... Most of our grassland is serpentine grassland. Soils derived from serpentine rock have a lot of unusual characteristics. And over evolutionary time, native plants have learned how to deal with that. And non-native plants cannot cope. They cannot live on serpentine. Often what you'll see is the grasses, the non-native grasses and other things can grow right up to the edge of it and then they just stop. So what we see here is a glimpse of what California used to look like before the invasion of the non-native European grasses. It, it really is a serpentine time machine. It's uh, quite an experience to come into the park at first light at the beginning of the day and uh, see the marsh covered with bird life. For example, today I arrived at the park and the sun was rising. Dark was just disappearing as the light was beginning to wash over the park. Um, oftentimes when I'm driving in after just opening up the entrance gate, birds are still walking across the roadway from one marsh to the other. 
Coyote Hills is home to a variety of wildlife, especially birds that are attracted to the marshlands. Pelicans, egrets, the common, the snowy egret, as well as their cousin, the great blue heron. And of course, many migratory waterfowl, like mallards and pintails and shovelers. Open space is, I think philosophers down through the ages have talked about the value of open space. You need a place to go to refresh and to recreate or recreate yourself. And that's what the East Bay Regional Park District provides. In this area, it's Coyote Hills Regional Park. Only natural stories feature local environmental groups and volunteers working to preserve some of our threatened habitats and inviting viewers to become involved. That one looks great. You guys are getting them in really well. Save the Bay is an organization that works to celebrate, protect, and restore San Francisco Bay. We've been around since 1961. So our history is really focused on halting bay fill, stopping pollution coming into the bay, increasing freshwater flows, and also educating and involving people in bay issues. We've lost a lot of habitat. There's an incredible amount of people who want to get involved in protecting it and bringing it back. So this group in particular, this is a Girl Scout group from Napa. Um, they've come up to do a service project today and they're planting marsh gum plant. And now the plants that they're planting will provide habitat for a lot of the birds and wildlife that use this system. I'm taking the plant out so I can put it in the hole right there. And then I'm gonna cover it up with soil and plant it. Really schools and youth are the backbone of the program. So middle and high school students all around the Bay, we have a site adoption program now. Uh, Nevada Charter School and several others have come out monthly to this site and the kids really get to know it over time. So we've had 12,000 volunteers in three years who've come out to do these types of projects. There's a lot of people who want to help and a lot of work that needs to be done. Each episode of Bay Nature on the Air will include an in-depth feature story profiling the efforts of dedicated naturalists in a wide array of our diverse natural habitats, like spawns, Noalani Litwincella. I'm Noalani. I'm a creek naturalist. My mom and I, we lead tours um, for the salmon. We show people the salmon. The people come, they go with us on tours to see these coho and sometimes steelhead. And maybe Chinook or Chum. There's also another species in here called a steelhead, which they, they do not guard their nests. Also, they, they can spawn multiple times. They'll come up, spawn, and go back down to the ocean, and then come back up again. And there's also Chinook and Chum in here. There's, that's also, there's also another salmon species called Chinook and uh, Chum as well. And what they do is uh, the female releases uh, milt. And... No, the female releases Oh, I'm sorry. The, 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 the male <laughs> releases milk, the female releases the eggs, and the eggs uh, drift into uh, this red, which she'll then cover up with, with rocks. I got my little partner here, so we'll yeah. set. <laughs> Perfect. Nolani is my son. He got interested in salmon last year, um, and I didn't know anything about salmon, but we have followed his interest, and we've learned a lot about salmon. Uh, we took it a naturalist training. Salmon are called anadromous fish. That means that they spawn in fresh water and then from the fresh water they go out to the ocean, they stay there for a while and then they come back to the fresh water. Bay Nature is a natural for television. Most TV segments will be augmented by additional information available on the Bay Nature website and by the articles that appear in the quarterly print magazine. Many stories will be elaborated upon in special print pull-out standalones suitable for educational use. I think it's important that people recognize the value of the nature that's found in the Bay Area to ensure that future generations will have the same kinds of opportunities that we do. I mean, there's not many places in the, in the world or this country where you can walk out your door in a population of seven million people. Within a very short period of time, a short drive or even taking public transportation, find yourself in a place where you can see bobcats, foxes, coyotes, migrating waterfowl, hawks, uh, pristine and primeval forests and have this incredible natural history experience that rejuvenates you. I think there's something obviously that's more alive 
about the, the visual image, about movement, about motion. And that's the kind of thing that television can capture and the magazine can't. So I think they're a perfect complement to one another. It's one thing to be able to show a picture of a salmon spawning, but it does not convey the excitement that you get when you see that salmon thrashing about that dynamic sense of what a struggle this, this animal has to go through to reproduce. The media has done a wonderful job of connecting us to other worlds. Media has connected us to Africa, media has connected us to Iraq, it has connected us to the moon, it's connected us to all sorts of other worlds. What we really need in media for is to connect us to our own world. And this is something that TV can do in a way that no other medium can possibly do it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Pinnacle. This is the largest crowd to ever witness a Condor release. We are so happy to see you folks all here today. Can I see? Of course. Of course. There's a real need not only to be informed about the world around you, but to love the world around you. That's what the real need is, 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 is to be uh, emotionally engaged and in love with the world around you. Rejuvenating, informing, and engaging the audience and their love of the world around them is exactly what Bay Nature on the Air intends to do.